Good to be here again speaking the, the word of the Lord. I'm enjoying going through the parables, parts of scripture that I enjoy. They're so simple, but at the same time so profound. Talking about mustard seeds, I guess, and yeast last week. Today we're going to be talking about weeds. Weeds. How many of us like weeds? When I was a child, I hated weeds. Yeah, my brother says amen. That'll be, that'll be one amen I get from Ronnie today. We spent hours as children attacking weeds, both from my father and grandfather. Whether it be with a hoe, with our hands, or a rototiller, they were our enemy. And we were told as children we were to sick them with all we had. My father decided, he, he instead of fighting the weeds, he was just prevent them from coming up, which is the better of the two options. But that required work, not when the weeds would come up, but it would require work the year before because you had to grind 9,000 bags of leaves and put them in compost piles and back in bags. So when, he would just pre- when a plants would get so high, he would then put about four inches of mulch on all of his garden so the weeds could not come up. And how dare a weed, if it would come up, oh, dad would just, it would be gone. So there's two ways. There's a sermon there, but that's not the one I'm preaching. You can either prevent the weeds from coming up or attack them when they do come up. I must say, I think my dad had the better of the two plans because once he put the mulch down, he never, we never, me and Ronnie didn't have to go out and pull weeds then. We just had to work like crazy the year before. So the weeds of life, let's go to Matthew chapter 13 and begin at verse 24. It says, here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's well, the farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted the good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked. No, he replied, you'll uproot the wheat if you do. Maybe I should have quoted that scripture to my father. They, I don't think they would have went for that. Let both grow together until the harvest, and I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, and burn them, and to put them, put the wheat into the barn. Now let's go to verse 36. Then leaving the crowds aside, Jesus went into the house, and his disciples said, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. And Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The fields is the world, and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. So we have the cast of this play, I guess you'd say. And just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove his kingdom. It will move from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. And anyone with the ears to hear should listen and understand. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. There's a few things we can focus on this morning. I mean, the focus is on weeds, and we're going to focus on that, but what do we do about them? They're always going to be there. Um, it's because of sin we even have thorns, thistles, and weeds. But as we look at this parable, how it's speaking to us, we have the cast explained. The weeds represents those people that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. 
Jesus, the farmer, planted good seed. In other words, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not a wheat. Hopefully you're a, a healthy plant that's producing fruit for the kingdom of God. But those people that do not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior are weeds. That's not a derogatory term. It's just something you're distinguished between sheep and goats or tares and wheat. That's all you're doing. But that night, for some reason, notice that word, but that night, the evil one went out and planted, sowed some weeds. Isn't that amazing how fast they grow? I remember I went out and it wasn't too long ago, I took a, a bunch, a bunch of little them, them bricks and I made like a patio out where I stooped down off my porch and I laid them all, had them laid in there and I tomped the ground real good and I went and got some stuff and limestone. I put it down, packed that down and we laid all them brick and um, I did everything, made them real tight and then I took that silica sand, put it in there, watered them and filled in all the cracks. I'm sure, hey, you know where I'm going with this. I thought, oh, surely these weeds won't come up and this. How are they going to go? There's nothing they can... Oh, no, I'm out there every week. They find a little crack. They'll come up through there. Where does that come from? It's just their nature. Just keep that in mind. But that night, unaware, there were weeds. Focus on the good, folks. Let's look at the good part of this story. The weeds in life, if we will allow the weeds in our life, will discourage you. Remember who are the weeds again? The people that do not know Jesus Christ. The weeds can discourage you. They'll deprive you of hope. They'll take your courage and confidence away. But Joshua 10.25 promises us, it says, do not be afraid or do not be dismayed, depending on what translation you're using, but be strong and courageous. The weeds in life, those people that do not know Jesus Christ, sometimes will not understand the things that you do. Why do you live that way? Why do you believe that way? who ask you all kinds of questions and try to deny the existence of God. And if you're not careful, they'll discourage you. In today's times, it's not easy. It's, it's real easy, I should say, to be discouraged. Because we live in troublesome times. Just go to the gas station, fill up your tank. It'll discourage you. The second thing, the weeds in life, sometimes people can discount you. They can make you feel worthless. They can make you feel cheap. They can make you feel less than your worth. What does Scripture say? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, it says, you know, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were bought with a high price. What was that price you were bought with? The blood of Jesus Christ we just celebrated in this table this morning. You were bought with a high price. So therefore, honor God with your body. But sometimes people that are without God can not only discourage you, but discount you. You don't matter. It happens a lot when you start preaching a moral message to an immoral society. Well, that's for you. That's not for me. Just keep your opinions to yourself. They'll discount you. The third thing is sometimes they'll discredit you. If the first two don't work, they'll discredit you. They'll reject you. They'll disbelieve you. They'll distrust you. They'll doubt you. And in Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 21 and following, you can read what 
it says, it says a brother will betray his brother to death and a farmer will betray his own child and children will rebel their parents and cause them to be killed and all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. Wouldn't it be nice to think that when I gave my life to Jesus Christ that now everyone's going to love me? I'm never going to have any problems again that the world will look to me and say, there's a model of perfection. It's not that way. They looked at Jesus Christ and a lot of people hated him and said, kill him, crucify him. The same people one week were praising his name and then a week later they were saying, we want Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. We're so fickle. So truths to consider when we look at these weeds in our life. Now, who are the weeds again? Those people without Jesus. What do we do about these weeds? We treat them mean? Ignore them? What do we do with them? Scripture, I think we get some things to understand about them. The first one, in verse 25, we find out that their beginnings are unseen and unknown. This was while everyone was sleeping. I would imagine there's been a few times you've asked the question, why do I have the boss that I have? Why does the Lord allow that person to be in my life? Everything I do is not good enough. It's never right. It's always wrong. Why, did, why do I have to live beside this crazy neighbor that I have? What, what is up with this member of my own family that no one wants to sit by when we have a gathering? Maybe it's even a church member that's a weed in your life that you'd like to pluck out. Now I'm getting real. There are those people in life, no matter where you see them, whether it's in your own household, in your ch church, in your neighborhood, at your job, there are people without the Lord that are in your life and their weeds are without God. They don't have God in their life. Their beginnings are unseen and unknown. You don't know why they're there, but they're there. You wish you could get them out of your life, but they're there. The second thing, they were planted by Satan. This is the amazing thing. They were put there by Satan. That's what Scripture says. Satan put them weeds there. Don't blame God for this. God, why are you doing this to me? Well, it didn't. Scripture says Satan planted those weeds. He put them there. Is your faith real? What do you do when somebody cuts you off in the middle of the road and almost wrecks you and kills your family? What do you do? Do you act godly or do you tell them they're number one? And yell at them and wish you could shoot their tires out. Now, we've all been there. I ride a motorcycle. There's been more than one time where I've seen my life flash before me. It's not always their fault. They might really not see me. Not everybody's treating you this way because they have vengeance against you. We all make mistakes. How many of us have pulled out in front of somebody and said, oh my, I didn't mean to do that. How many of us have done that? All right, well, okay. So the next time somebody does it, you think about that. Maybe they just had a father that went through emergency surgery and had other things on their mind and just did something stupid while they were driving down the road because their mind was distracted. Doesn't excuse the behavior, but it gives them a reason not to get mad at these people so easy. It's amazing. They were planted there by Satan. Don't ask God why he did this to you. It was Satan. Third thing, they were intentionally planted. We need to remember that. They were intentionally planted. The devil did that. In John 10.10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have what? 
life and that you might have life, what? More abundant. It says in 1 Peter 5, 8 that the devil prowls around like a what? A roaring lion seeking whom he, what? May devour. He intentionally does this. There are people in our life, weeds in our life, intentionally put there by Satan. We're not going to avoid that. Jesus Christ had all kinds of people that hated him. The Son of God, the perfect Lamb of God, had people that hated him. Don't think you're going to get by with a mulligan on that. The next thing, they show no partiality. The weeds were among the wheat. They were planted together, same field. And, we, and it says in Matthew 5.45 that the, the rain shines on the weed and the wheat and, and the good and the bad and the rain falls on the good and bad all at the same time. There's no partiality. Sometimes we want partiality, don't we? Oh God, could you treat me? Make me special, Lord. Zap that person over there, but bless me. Aren't you glad that when we were a weed, God just didn't vaporize us? That we had a chance to become a living plant in Jesus Christ. The next thing, truths to consider about weeds, is they don't care about our well-being. They really don't. I mean, it says that and they just went away. Scripture says in verse 25, they planned the seeds and just went away. They really don't care. If these weeds hurt us, it doesn't bother them. But when we do evil back to the weeds, it should bother us. We live in a very vengeful society where I'm not just going to get even, but I'm going to get ahead. I'm going to get one up on you. You do that to me once, shame on me. You do it, shame on you. Do it once, shame on me. So I'm going to make sure it won't happen the second time. So I'm going to make sure I get you the first time just to give you a warning. You do that again. We're going to have some words. We're going to have some trouble. That might be the worldly way of dealing with problems, but in reality, is it the Christian way? We don't follow the world's way of dealing with conflict in this country. Every time somebody gets mad, we get mad back. That's just not the way Christians should deal with conflict. And these weeds will drive us to it. Amen? They will. They'll get under our every nerve that we have. The last nerve they'll get under. But how many times have we got under somebody's Nerves, got on somebody's nerves. How many times have we done that? Have we ever been somebody's last nerve? <laughs> they really don't care about our well-being, but they are watching us. I will warn you that while these weeds are doing their weedly things, they're watching us. They'll make fun of you and won't support you the whole time they see you living for God, but when their life falls apart, I want to tell you something. This has happened to me personally at work. I've had it happen to me more than once when their life falls apart, and you've treated them kindly, and they know you're a man or woman of God. When their life falls apart, they will come to you and say, they'll look at you with them sheepish eyes because they know they've offended you many times. They'll say, could you pray for me? They will. And you're not going to say, nope, you made your bed, going to lay in it. If you do that, please don't do that. If you just don't tell me, because I'll be mad. That's not what a Christian should do. You say, sure, I'll pray for you. In fact, if you have time, pray for it then. Pray for them then. And the last thing, weeds, they grow and exist the same time as the good seed. They come up the same time. We're together till the Lord comes home. We're going to have weeds in our life. Hate to tell you, not everyone's going to love you. It's just the way it is. 
I wish that were the case. Wouldn't that be, even in churches, we have people we can't get along with. You don't have to amen that. Maybe it's your own pastor. I don't know. But even in church, we do. There's people that just rub us the wrong way. But I'm talking about weeds. Non-Christian. Remember that. You need to remember this, that they're amongst us. And they're there for a reason. We are to invest in their lives that they might be no longer weeds when the Lord returns. That can, we can make them fruitful vines for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We plant good seed in their life and their life is transformed from a weed to a blade of wheat that can be used and nourish somebody else's life. That's what our job is. That's what our job is. Reactions to the weeds in our life. We find one reaction in verse 27. We blame God for them. That's what some of us do. What does it say? It says, it answers right there. The farmers, workers went to the, him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? Why, why did you put weeds there? God, why did you do that? Or the second reaction is we react incorrectly towards them in verses 28, 29. Should we pull out the weeds? How about if I go take care of that weed out there? I'll go pull their life out. Kind of like we do joke around with our kids. I brought you into this world. I'll take you out. Well, sometimes we want to do that with people. I'm going to pluck you out. You're done. I'll knock you out of my life. We might not do it with our fists, but we do it with our attention. We do it with our ears. Sometimes our mouth just speaks and it just shuts people down. We don't let them get a word in edgewise. We react incorrectly. So points to ponder as we leave. This is such a simple story, but so profound. Points to ponder, remember, and then you can look at these points. Remember that the weeds are people. The weeds are people created by God. And perhaps they were put in our life because we are that one person that God entrusts them with to win them to Jesus Christ. And I say that thinking back in my life that there were weeds in my life that I've seen their life turn around. And later, I've lived long enough to have them people come back and say, I remember, and they'll finish the story. And I thought that that was totally unnoticed by that person. The weeds are people. Oh, they irritate us. They do. They, oh, they rub us the wrong way, say mean things, maybe do mean things. But that leads us to the second point. Remember the weeds are sinners, so they will act as such. Don't expect weeds to act like saints. They're sinners. And sometimes us saints don't act too saintly. You can't expect a sinner to. Remember the weeds are sinners, so they will act like sinners until they have the goodness of Jesus Christ and the grace of God come into their life and transform their innermost being. The third thing, remember before our conversion, we too were what? Weeds. We were weeds. Isn't that great that we're no longer weeds if we're in Christ? You're a new creation. Behold, all things have begun, are gone. Behold, all things have what? Become new. We're no longer weeds. We're wheat for the kingdom of God. Remember that. Remember this, another thing. God chooses to love weeds through us. God loves everybody. We, we can't imagine that. Why would God love everybody? Aren't you glad he loves everybody? Because he loved you. Even when you are a weed. Regardless of your status, whether you're a wheat or a weed, God loves 
you, and he chooses to do it through people of God. Remember next that we must choose to love the weeds to God. That is our job. Love those weeds as hard as they are to love. Love them. I think some people before I was saved that invested their life in me. And after time, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And there have been people in my life that have mentored me all of my life to make me who I am today. Invest your life in some weeds because their life can be changed. Remember that the weeds will be in our lives whether we like it or not, so don't isolate yourself. Don't say, well, I'm going to stay in today because I don't want to talk to that person. Well, if you do that, what good is it? What good is our Christianity if we just keep it to ourselves? It's like having a cure for a major disease and they just keep it on a shelf, hidden in a safe somewhere and never off it to the sick. We have the cure for disease called sin. We have that cure. Don't isolate yourself and keep it all to yourself. Remember that one day God will judge the weeds. Now this is really important. God will do the the harvesting. Isn't that what Scripture says? His harvestals will come. God will judge the weeds. Let me point out one other thing. It's not our job. Don't make a judgment on somebody based upon your conscience, based upon your assumptions. You can base it on the Word of God. Don't get personal. One day, God will judge the weeds. A man will eventually reap what he sows, Scripture says. And the last point, that's the favorite one of every sermon. Amen? Amen. There you go. I knew I'd get one. Remember, we as God's plants, plants, not weeds, but we as God's plants will remain and live forever with Him. But what should drive us to do all those points prior is that if we don't reach those weeds for Jesus Christ, the weeds will remain in fiery torment forever with Satan. It's a challenge today to look into our lives and say, what am I doing with the weeds that have been placed in my life? Am I resenting every day I'm with them? Do I wish they'd never come? Or am I doing my best to try? to win them to Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray.